So here's the setup as uh, recommended per the Craig instructions. One thing I didn't like is that when I slide back and forth, this end just rubs along here. When I tighten up this knob, I can have a gap at this end, but at the other end it's touching the table. I like to have a little gap there, the same as on a table saw, so that uh, sawdust doesn't bunch up there and push the wood away. Another thing I didn't like is that these nylon adjusting screws are kind of loose. They're not going to stay where I set them. Now if I turn down these screws, then I can get a gap down here, but that doesn't really happen unless I push this down and then tighten up the knob, which is really inconvenient. So that whole arrangement just seems like opportunity for improvement. So the first thing I did is made this block of wood with a couple of strips of ultra high molecular weight tape and it attaches to the back of the fence with the 1 quarter 20 hex head bolts and then I've got wing nuts to tighten that up. That Teflon tape rides on here so it keeps the fence always off the table. No scratching as it moves back and forth. This strip of wood is attached to the back of the table with the threaded holes that are the same as at the other end. Down at this end I removed the four nylon screws so I won't use them at all. And I can now see that this surface is the one that the bracket slides on. So I've stuck a piece of the ultra high molecular weight tape onto that bearing surface and then I'll just trim off. I also stuck a piece of that ultra high molecular weight tape on the end of this so that it doesn't scratch the rail each time it's clamped. Okay that slides quite nicely and there's a nice uniform gap under there no scratching on the table. So now how do we get the fence perpendicular to the table without these nylon screws because that's what Craig recommends you adjust to get it square. And my solution was to loosen these bolts, there's two of them, and they're in slots and move this fence up and down until I got it square. And that'll stay in square much longer than it would have by using the nylon bolts because I've got a long bearing surface on here that that rests on and this is all held rigid. I made a couple of uh, fences out of three quarter inch MDF, a tall one for resawing and regular one and I may make some more. And they attach to the aluminum rail with a half inch hex head bolt and these uh, little furniture connectors. There's the uh, quarter 20 half inch bolts. And there's a three quarter inch uh, Forstner bit cut recess in there. So these end up slightly below the surface. Now an interesting thing I noticed is that this piece of MDF wasn't flat. But when I unscrewed it and took it off, then set it against the straight edge, it was flat. So somehow these two things on the end were pulling it in. And I thought, well, maybe I need six of them. Another idea is to just add a washer on each bolt. And I've chosen thin washers that are of the same thickness. And then that spaces the fence away from the aluminum extrusion and uh, kind of like suspends it between the two ends. And with the washers, that is dead flat, even with the bolts tight. And I make all the fences out of the same thickness, three quarter inch MDF. The measurement tape was calibrated and applied with the MDF fence attached so that it'll be correct whenever an MDF fence is used. Even with the knob firmly tightened, if I push against this fence, as would happen when resawing, for example, I can easily get 10, even 15 thou deflection. But if I clamp that block onto this rail, I can only get one thou deflection with about the same force. This block and the clamp are accomplishing three things. First, it's the gliding surface for moving the fence. Second, it's holding the fence so that it doesn't move this way when it's being pushed against. And third, it's keeping the fence perpendicular to the table because this block of wood has perpendicular corners on it. I made sure of that. I also found that the wooden block made this micro adjuster slide much better. Uh, without the block, this would tilt down a bit and pull that out of alignment and then it would all be sticking and I'd have to kind of lift the fence up to slide it along. Whereas uh, block here, everything just moves nice. Then of course you lock that and then you can make fine adjustments and then lock the uh, fence in place. Another little thing I did is I put a washer between the aluminum rail and the cast table for each bolt because as this was sliding in it was just brushing against the metal there and kind of throwing things off so I didn't like that. As for setting the fence uh, this way to compensate for drift, I don't. I set up the bandsaw according to the Alex Snodgrass video which I'll show below and therefore the fence is put perfectly parallel with the miter slot just like a table saw.
It's not a special blade. Uh, it's not even a new blade. It's been used for a while, so it's a little dull. And it's a three teeth per inch hook. You can see the uniform thickness there because the fence is perpendicular to the table and the table is perpendicular to the blade and good uniform thickness along the length. So no need to have a pivot block here like um, Craig sells an accessory to go with the fence where you can pivot it to compensate for drift. Just set up your back band saw the way Snodgrass shows and everything will go straight. I should mention that I did check at one point that my miter slot was perpendicular to the wheel of the bandsaw. I think that's important because these tables are adjustable and if the table was skewed off and then you put the fence parallel with the miter slot, that whole uh, system might not work. And it may be hard to see, but you can see how smooth that is, even with a three tooth per inch blade. I did apply paste wax, two coats to the surface here, and also to the back side, uh, so that I get smooth sliding on the MDF. If I want to do a straight cut on a small piece of wood like this, I have to have a lot of blade exposed, because I can't lower these guides down below the top of that, because the blade is so close to the fence. And that's not ideal to have that. So I made this piece of wood with a hook on the end that allows me to quickly change to a shallow fence and make that cut without having to remove this plate here and maybe put in a very short one and then switch back to the, the full height. Now when this piece is in place, of course, the ruler is going to be off, but I made it exactly one inch thick, so the ruler's off by exactly one inch, so it's still a useful ruler. Now I was going to put a magnet on the bottom of this, maybe two magnets, to hold it in place, but it seems to work pretty good as it is, and you know, you're always going to be pushing this piece of wood in anyway. So I think I'll run like that for a while and see what happens. 